Hi friends, I'm Colonel Thayer and this is Get Back to Work, a series in which I get back to work and today we're on fishing North Atlantic. Uh, uh, brand new, uh, well it's not it's a, not a brand new game, it's been out a couple of years, but uh, it's brand new to me. I've completed my tutorial mission and, uh, and I'm now out hunting some lobster. <laughs> anyway, uh, today's question comes from, uh, who does it come from? comes from McGilly and uh, it's an interesting one. Right, as ever, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get the job underway, and then we'll uh, and then we'll get to work. We're hunting lobster, uh, and uh, if you go, you can make them out there. We've got some here, got a, got a couple there. So uh, so I'm going to I'm going to chuck my pots out over a over a, a gentle course. Uh, I paid for the uh, I paid for the intel to find these lobster, and that's uh, that seems to have worked out quite well. I'm just drifting with the current at the moment. Um, but the one thing I haven't been able to find on the screen anywhere is which way the current is actually travelling. It's not the big yellow arrow, yellow arrow. No, no, no. That that tells me where the the lobster lobster density is. And we all want a, a dense lobster. You can't probably can't make it out because it's night time. Because of course it's night time. Uh, but I'm aboard the uh, the good ship uh, Chop Monkey. Uh, and uh, right, so let's get to work. Um, anyway, McGilly's question is uh, is. It's career-based. Uh, I, I mean, I'm going to uh, I'm going to summarise because there's there's a lot to it. McGilly's asking three questions in one. And it's, what do I currently do for a living? That's that's part of the question. Um, that's your preferred choice and the one you're most interested to hear about. Uh, and then what have I done in the past? Okay, yeah, yeah. What jobs did I love or hate? And uh, and what did I want to do when I was growing up? Three questions in one, friends. Uh, hang on, I just want to make sure the throttle's off. I was pretty sure it was, but I... There you go. Just... No, 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 no. You're going to need to do that, and then make sure your throttle's set to neutral. Just, just neutral. There you go. Leave it... We want station holding. Station keeping, uh, please. Uh, that, that would be good. Right. Okay, let's bait up some lobster pots. Uh, okay, so uh, so work stuff. What do, I, what do I do for a living? Uh, I think it's... I think the most interesting approach... Uh, for this particular question is going to be what do I do for a living and how did I get there um, because uh, retrospectively I'm gonna, actually I am going to cover all three questions um, uh, is uh, hang on, <laughs> none of this is second nature yet so I've I've got to uh, I've got 98 baits remaining that's that's good uh, right bait that pot bait the pot Yep, there you go. In you go, there, tiger. And uh, I want to, I want to, I want to set it. There you go. That's one out. Right. Let's uh, let's get the next pot on the go, uh, and then uh, and then possibly ease it forward a bit. Yeah. Uh, right. So uh, let's just trundle forwards a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm I can I can foresee what's going to happen here is I'm going to have no recollection of where I've actually left anything. Uh, I mean, he's got boy. That's got a boy attached. I'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. That, or if you're American, of course, it's a buoy, which it just isn't. It's a boy. Um, uh, right. Yeah. So no. As a kid, I, I, I went through. I went through various different phases. And I'm talking about <clears throat> under the age of twelve. Uh, I had a I had a moment of of quite fancying being a uh, a helicopter pilot. Doing what? No idea. Um, uh, I had another, I had another phase of, and, and this one was a slightly longer phase. I wanted to be a fireman, um, but that was largely because I quite liked fire. <laughs> I, I thought fire was quite exciting. Um, uh, so yeah, so I mean, those were, the, were really the only two kind of aspirational things that I had initially. But uh, but one thing that I I, uh, I kind of drifted in. Well, no, I didn't even drift into it. Was um, uh, when, when I was a kid, I had, uh, before I had a computer or a games machine of any kind at all, you're going to want to drift a little bit further forwards than that. Too many pots in one area and you're going you're gonna to have, gonna have trouble. Uh, let's, uh, let's, get a, let's get a roll in a bit. There we go. That's it. Pull it away a little bit further. That's the ticket. That'll do. That'll do. Right, now set your power to zilch. Which is about there. There should be a power off button and just drift. But yeah, yeah it's all fine. Um, 
Uh, what? Uh, yeah, no, I don't. Before, before I had any kind of games device, uh, you used to get little handhelds. Play it on that, and that was followed up by the, the you know, play it on little things like that. And I had Space Invaders on that, which was Ace, uh, which I thoroughly liked. And uh, and a, a couple of friends of mine, they had a couple each. Uh, one had Pac-Man and another one had, uh, I don't know, some other thing. Um, and one of them had an Atari, uh, which was great. Um, and, uh, and one afternoon, set that pot. Set the pot. Grab pot. Yep. Set the pot. Set it. Set that pot. This pot. Set it. Set the pot. You're giving me a red circle here. Maybe it's because I'm too... What not? I'm too close to the previous uh, the previous pot instance. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not giving me it's not giving me an awful lot of information here. It's baited. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. All right, okay. Well, it's, I'm, I'm not downhearted. Anyway, one day we we got everything that we had and we set it up in one uh, in one place, which was well my house because uh, of my idea. So everybody brought their stuff around and we we had our own arcade. Um, I mean, there, there were probably six or seven game things in there in total. Um, yeah, at 100 metres, my, my sonar's not good enough. Why am I getting the red light there? Maybe I have to stick all my pots in the same location. Maybe. Anyway, I'm backing up. We'll find out in due course. I can't see flipping anything. I've got my work lights on, but it's not really helping very much because I haven't spent to upgrade them yet. What I want to be doing is illuminating the entire area. As far as you're concerned, all you're doing is watching a boat bobbing around on a black screen with a couple of maps at the bottom. There you go. Set. Baited. Yes. Chuck it out the side. There we go. Right. Okay. Uh, right. I don't know why that worked there, but it did. Okay. All right. Ease down. Uh, back into this. Back into that. Let's get out the next one. I, got, I think I can set five at once. Uh, I, I mean, I've got eight. I, I bought too many. These things happen, and and that was great. And uh, and that set in in my head uh, an aspiration to, uh, uh, to to one day have uh, the ability to uh, to to run an uh, not run an arcade particularly, but to have a bunch of people in my in my house uh, all playing games together. Uh, with you know, with equipment to boot, and, and later on, uh, you know, when, once I started having kids, the aspiration became, you know, ah, oh, wouldn't it be great if everybody had their own PC, and uh, and would be able to, you know, play games together. And wouldn't you know it, it wasn't that long into my adult life that that actually became quite feasible. Um, uh, initially, I would, uh, you know, I'd, every time I'd upgrade my computer, there would be, you know, leftover bits available to, you know, that would lead lead to only needing maybe 50, 60 quid's worth of stuff to, to get a full PC set up. So I did. And before you knew it, there were, there were like three PCs all in one room and people would play together. And uh, when, when we had the full force assembled, uh, which was uh, myself, herself, and a, and a a bevy of children between the pair of us. Um, yep, let's, let's chuck this one out here. There you go, that's another one done. Good. Sonar's not good enough. Yeah, that's alright, it's okay. It's okay. Right, let's set up another one. Keep them coming. Um, and at, at peak, <laughs> at peak, was it seven? I don't know, I think there were seven of us. Yeah. No, no, we had the ability for, we had seven uh, PCs set up in one room. And, uh, and let me tell you, playing uh, multiplayer Battlefield 1942 uh, with the uh, with all of us uh, on one team, and then the uh, the AI uh, taking taking the role of the opposition, and we'd always we'd always give the AI uh, a massive a massive advantage. Uh, yeah, let's check this one out here. Can't place it within a hundred meters of other fishing gear. That would explain much. Okay, all right, okay. I'll just keep doing it until it, until it says, yes, bruv. Maybe it'll highlight. Um, and that was just a delight. We'd play things like The Ship. We'd play, uh, did we ever play Unreal Tournament? I don't think we did. No, Team Fortress we played. Um, uh, Battlefield 1942. Things are just fantastically good fun. And the amount of the banter 
that would uh, that would take place was was significant, and everyone would have a rare old time. And I imagine if you were to ask any of the kids, they'd go like, "No, that was that was just great." We, you know, it would happen every weekend, not only for like a couple of hours. Um, it's not like we were plugged into it all the time, not like I am now. Um, but it was just it was fantastic, and and it was a uh, an aspiration fulfilled. Not in a work sense, but in a in a in a childhood aspiration. Anyway, uh, I wanted to get into games. Uh, from oh, I don't know. I don't, actually when I was when I was doing my A levels, which is the the examinations that you do in this country, the, the educational examinations you do in this country between the ages of sixteen and eighteen. Uh, I didn't know which way I wanted to go. Um, uh, I was doing. Uh, I, I was quite theatrical. Uh, so I was doing music and drama, and uh, and then uh, I was doing computer studies as well, because I flipping love computers. Absolutely, I, I know it, it seems hard to believe now, uh, but I was I was quite the uh, quite a computer uh, quite a computer geek, and uh, and so you know I I enjoyed doing bits of programming. I I tried doing all this and that. Um, you know, I taught myself how to do some things, and, uh, and and that was that was okay. Only in basic, I wasn't ever very good at it because I didn't put the work in. Um, I got better, but I, but at the time, I, I, you know, I I knew just enough to be able to kind of simulate what a game might look like uh, without actually doing anything that could be described as you know proper coding. That's no, no, you're underplaying it. I mean, I did some stuff in basic, and it was it was good enough. Um, and uh, and what? Oh, and I and I designed. I started, we we stumbled across 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 a game in school. We, we stumbled across a game called um, It's a Crime, which was a play by mail game. Uh, at lunch times, we'd be playing Warhammer. Uh, uh, we uh, we got dispensation to play Warhammer, which we didn't bring. Uh, we didn't bring figures in. No, we we played it with bits of paper and we had a roll up map and we were doing it in that fashion, which was kind of cool, but uh, at the same time, you know, you just kind of go, oh, it's nerdy, and they kind of go, yeah, I've always been a nerd, I always have, always have, but cutting edge nerd, you see, and that's the important bit, is no, I don't, I don't follow the herd, no sir, I'm, I'm there early doors, uh, where it's all possible, with, uh, with some nerding, and, and that was grand, but we started playing this play by mail game called It's a Crime, where you run a, a street game, and, uh, uh, multiplayer, uh, and we were all playing that quite a lot. And so I wrote my own, uh, and I wrote a game called uh, Faceplant, uh, which was uh, a skateboard a skateboarding play by mail game. So you would you would take the role of an aspiring pro skateboarder, and uh, and you'd do practice, and you'd um, you'd travel to competitions and learn new tricks and buy new gear and all of that kind of good stuff and uh, it was it wasn't a great game I'll be honest but I coded the whole thing up and so it was uh, you know it was it was able to uh, to self generate turns and it was printing out stuff that I'd then send to people I think at its peak I had almost eight or nine people playing almost uh, it got a write-up in Rad, the uh, the British skateboard magazine, which I was, was just absolutely thrilled about. Uh, well, you would be. I mean, I would have been what 16, and uh, not even probably 15, 16, and uh, and got a write-up in, in Rad uh, as uh, you know, is it the ultimate in skate exploitation? Uh, and they kind of go, no, it's very obvious that the people who, who wrote this uh, are skateboarders, and you kind of go. Yeah, I mean, that's maybe gilding the lily. My brother was the biggest skateboarder. I always wanted to be a skateboarder, but I was never any good at it. Uh, I don't, again, not putting in the time. I mean, you know, you can be good at more or less anything. Uh, within reason. You can, be, you can be good at more or less anything if you put the time in. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, you know, I, was, I, put, I put some time in. I quite enjoyed going down hills, which sort of counted. Uh, I could ride along quite merrily without looking too ungainly um, and without falling off, which was kind of good. Um, but 
Yeah, so I wrote a, wrote a game about it. And then I started, and what happened next? Then I went to university. And when I went to university, I had the options. I had two, two options chucked at me. I had two offers. Uh, one of which was to, uh, uh, was to go and do uh, computer science. And the other of which was to go and do creative arts. Now, I went to do creative arts uh, on one simple principle. I had a, had a conversation with myself. Uh, which was a creative arts for those who don't know and, it, and it's, this is going to feel like I'm defending the course um, Really interesting course. Is it useful or practical in a, on a daily basis? In an oblique fashion, but that's that's a topic for a different a different video um, But it's it's not performing arts performing arts. I summarize right this is the summary that I usually use performing arts is pretending to be a tree right? Uh, creative arts is telling other people to pretend to be a tree while playing the accordion and, and while they're painted blue. Right. And the reason that they're playing an accordion uh, or painted blue may not immediately be apparent. There you go. That's the, that's the basic difference. Oh, yeah, I did all of that business. All of that. All that rubbish. That was, yeah, I was well into that. Um, anyway, I went to do creative arts because I thought, look, if push comes to shove, uh, I always take the uh, the slacker route through things. I do the minimum amount possible uh, in order to uh, to fulfil what is required of me. Um, and <laughs> ah, has that continued in your in your adult life? Just just a little bit. Um, uh, and uh, and therefore, which one am I more likely to stick with? And I thought, well, you know, I think creative arts will sound, sounds like it's going to be a bit more fun. So, uh, so I went off and did that for three years. Now, coming out the other side of it, uh, I started writing another game. Had a terrible job. I, I tried being a rock star for a couple of years, and uh, that didn't really work. And so I started. Uh, I started to write another game. I'm going to zoom in here so I can see where all my pots is. Uh, I'm going to head back towards one and two. Now, I don't think I was on the uh, on the on the lobster super highway here. I think I deviated from that. Um, yeah, no matter. So I started writing another game. The game was called No Holds Barred, uh, and it was futuristic American football with four teams on the pitch at the same time. Some of those players might be mutants, some of them might be robots. It was really rather good. It won some awards, you know. Oh yeah. Well, I say some. It won an award, uh, and that was uh, a play-by-mail game again. Um, I really enjoyed play-by-mail. I played quite a few different games. And, uh, and the thing I liked about it best was just the sheer anticipation of that envelope dropping through your door. Uh, and you kind of go, I get to find out what. If you've never come across Play by Mail, it's basically turn based gaming uh, where you get your current setup, which is a bunch of sheets of paper which gives you details about what's going on. Okay? You then analyze what's going on and then you fill out your order sheet. Uh, which can be incredibly complicated, it can be incredibly simple, it can be four instructions. It's a Crime was only ever four instructions. Uh, with my games, there was, there was probably five, six times as much as that. Uh, and uh, and once, you'd, once you've filled out the instructions, you pop it in an envelope, send it back to the company before the cut-off time. They then input those instructions and it processes, it prints out all the stuff and off you go again. That's jolly good. But you would really look forward to your turn uh, arriving. And I think that's where I developed a love for, for kind of uh, really overanalyzing everything that came in. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd have... It might take you 15 minutes to read through the turn information that came back to you. I mean, there was a substantial amount of, of printage that you'd get. Um, uh, but then I'd spend, you know, four or five hours. And I'm sure I wasn't alone in that. Four or five hours... Uh, kind of studying the results and going, aha, well that clearly means some such. Um, and it was it was fabulous. And expensive in a turn-by-turn -turn basis, you'd be paying, I mean this was the, the late 80s, early 90s, and you'd be paying two, three quid a turn, which was not a small amount of money. But the amount of fun that you'd get out the other side of it was, was just immense. Um, the, the, yeah, it would, the, you would definitely get Good bang for buck, off the uh, off the how entertained and enthralled is this going to keep me? Uh, so yes, yeah, so I wrote this game and it had maybe thirty, maybe forty players at peak, uh, and so it, I mean it wasn't making any money. 
Uh -huh. I mean, they were all paying for their turns and stuff. But it was, uh, but you eat that really fast in printer ink and photocopying costs and postage and paper and 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 and. and. It's not a good way. You have to be in the thousands of players to to make a, any kind of viable income from it. Um, but as a result of that, I put a portfolio of ideas that I'd got. I uh, started working on a second game, uh, which got to the kind of testing stage. Uh, we called it play testing back then. These days they'd call it a beta. Um, or no, no, not even. It's probably early access, I think. It would probably be the, the equivalent thereof. Um, and uh, what? Uh, well, yes. What well, and what? Yeah, I put uh, the, uh, the second. The second game I made was called Ratings War, uh, which is about running a TV company, and uh, you'd create the programs and you'd and you'd license TV shows and all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, I know these things exist now, but I made that. No one ever played it. I think about five people must have played it in total. It was quite good. Um, the fun bit for it was clearly coming up with the names of the TV shows. Uh, they, they, that was where I sort of just really latched on to the love of uh, surrealistic naming. Um, and I'd come out of a university course where you were taught surrealism as one of the modules. Um, not in a sense of how to be surreal, more in a case of how did it come about, what were the, uh, uh, what were the political and, and sociological trappings that were going on that, that led to uh, you know, that led to what you know, led to surrealism and Dada and all that kind of stuff kind of emerging in the first place. Interesting stuff. Practical? Not really. But interesting? Oh, you betcha. Um, so, yeah, so there, there, there was that. Anyway, I, I put this portfolio together and I got it printed and bound, and uh, it was probably 30 pages long. Uh, and I sent it to every games company in the UK uh, saying, Hello, I want to be a game designer. Uh, every every company in the, in the UK I sent it to, and I didn't get a single response. Not a single response. Just kind of, yeah, it was gutting. I must have spent 50 or 60 quid on getting these things printed up and, and then sent out and the cover letter written. Now, I think, retrospectively, I could have done a better job, but to not even get a, a, a sniff, not a nothing, was uh, was rubbish, um, but hey, it, it was not meant to be. Anyway, time passed and, and the game continued, and I had kids, and uh, and uh, I started playing a game called Battle Zone, which many of you will be familiar with. And this is 1996, seven, five. It's around that era. Um, uh, started playing a game called Battle Zone online. Might be 98. Might be 98. Uh, and. Uh, I started playing it multiplayer. I played, played a bit of the single player. It was never very good at the single player, but I started playing it multiplayer. Uh, there is a time speed tool here somewhere, and that's what I want now, is because I've got to wait 18 hours for my lobster pots to percolate. How does one... You know what? I'm going to look it up. Okay, apparently can't skip time, because, uh, because when they tested it with skipping time, made it too easy. And you kind of go, oh, okay, all right, well, all right, I'll give you that. Uh, anyway, I've got uh, the the age of my pot number one is three hours. Uh, I'm supposed to wait until it's between 18 and 20 hours before I can pick it up. I mean, there's two ways I could go about doing this, is I could sit here for the next, I don't know how long. This is a game that really lends itself towards sit here for I don't know how long. Um, or I could go for a little drive, which will use fuel, but also time. Yeah, I could do like an hour, a couple of hours out, a couple of hours back. Yeah. Yeah, really need more activities to uh, to benefit from this. Oh, here it is. There's, here's the chop monkey. It's magnificent, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. That's, that's that. So what was I talking about? Um, yeah, I started playing a game called Battlestone. And, uh, and I played through a bit of the campaign. I found out how to turn the engine off. Did I tell you that? I'll turn it back on. Right. There you go. Right. Um... And uh, an in said game, uh, I started, when playing multiplayer, I discovered that clans were a thing. And I went, oh, oh, that's fun. And, uh, and it also became very, very apparent very quickly uh, that, uh, uh, that I wasn't brilliant at the game. 
I thought I was quite capable, uh, but it turns out maybe not so much. Uh, and uh, there you go. How far are we going? It's only just over one nautical mile, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. No, 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 no. It's it, it's a it's a reasonable shake. All right, let's uh, let's plot that in. There you go. Do a quick lap. Right, what's that got me? Um, uh, two hours to do that lap. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I went. You know what? I'm going. I'll, I'll start a clan. And before you know, it, I mean, like I mentioned, I'll make a clan for people that aren't very good. Um, and, and I'll call it the Vacuum Clan. For people that suck. Huh? Yeah? Huh? Yeah? Pretty clever. Um, and, uh, uh, and before you know it, it was, it was getting quite popular. And I went, you know what? Northern Lights. Um, uh, and before you know it, I was, it had a, a reasonable number of people in attendance. And, uh, and I went, clans have these websites. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out how to do that. Uh, so I spent an afternoon teaching myself HTML, and I found it fascinating from the get-go. I really loved the way that browsers and uh, and <laughs> something as simple as a paragraph tag really impressed me in in how jolly usable it was. And so I built a website for the clan, and uh, and no sooner had I finished as I started working on the next one because I'd learned new tricks, and I went, oh, I've got better ideas and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and before you know it I had half a dozen different websites for various different parts of the the multiplayer experience for that was it um, and uh, and it was jolly good then I discovered Ultima Online this is what I started playing in 98 uh, I discovered Ultima Online <coughs> uh, and by this time I was working full time as a webmaster uh, because there weren't many of us at the time and despite the fact that my skill set wasn't that robust um, I still learned, I was, I was learning at a rate of knots, so I'd started learning uh, MySQL and, and PHP as well. Uh, I'd got a, a scattering of JavaScript going on, and uh, and the dark days of style sheets hadn't yet emerged. So you could still just build everything to work in a table, and it just worked. Also, it's incredibly fast, so fast. Uh, to this day, I can build a website in tables way faster than I could in style sh using style sheets. Style sheets are a bloated, flipping bane of everyone's existence. Yeah, they're responsive, but I don't care that much. Um, I digress. I hate style sheets with a passion. Uh, hand coded. Yeah, 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 yeah. No woozy wig in, in my house. Not in this dojo, you don't. Um, uh, and. Uh, playing Ultima Online, I started to make it even more kind of fan sites for it. I was part of a player town, and uh, and you know I built the website for that town, and I had a clan on the go. I had a commodities exchange uh, that was kind of kind of trying to track uh, prices of different commodities. Didn't really work. <laughs> no, because the uh, the way that the in-game economy was uh, was set up was so volatile. It was uh, it was impossible. Well, it wasn't even volatile. It was almost fixed volatility. Uh, that it was it was nigh on can't fast travel within a hundred meters of fishing gear. Okay, well I won't then. Uh, let's do let's do this. Let's go a bit further this time. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that this is a really good haul that we get here. I can hope all day, but you never know. Um, uh, yeah, so I I built loads of the site, and then it came up, and someone in one of these communities said to me, "Oh, EA are looking for a European webmaster for Ultima Online," and I went, "Well, I'm the guy. That's me. I am a full-time webmaster already, and I built all these fan sites." So I went to went to Electronic Arts in Chertsey to uh, to interview at their massive Tracy Island style offices which they're no longer in. They had this custom building built, uh, and from the sky it looks like a giant E. The plan was to build a giant A next to it at some point. Kind of go, whoa, that's compensating, overcompensating for something. And it, but it was a magnificent building, still in use. Um, uh, it's, it's used in Inception. Where the, the big glass building where they're walking up steps that go nowhere, and then they're walking up those steps. I have walked up those steps. The movie in session, right? Um, yeah, and I'd, I had an interview, and uh, uh, my interviewer uh, was a very nice lady uh, who I sometimes refer to as herself. Um, and 
Yeah, and, and so I ended up being the European webmaster for, for Ultima Online. And from there, I had a career. And now, I am, uh, I'm creative director at, uh, at Dovetail Games, which is, uh, which is fantastic. It is the job I always wanted. And it only took me 20 years of career to get there. Could have got there sooner and I jumped path sooner, but I've just, you know, they've, they've put me in this role. Where, uh, where my, my job on a day-to-day -day basis is, what's next? What's, what's the big idea? What are, what's the, where are we? What are we? How are we? All of that kind of stuff. So I'm not so much involved. I mean, <clears throat> many of you will know already that I've done, I've done quite a lot of stuff for, for Dovetail in the past. Uh, I've been working for them now for uh, three years, four years, something like that. And before that, I did some consulting work for them. Uh, and it's because there's quite a few people who used to work at EA, and they know me from my, my time back then. Um, and so they brought me in to do stuff about understanding players. So a lot of player research, because I really do know players inside out. I have dealt with players for 25 years as a community manager. 25 years, you're uh, gilding that, Lily. All right, 22 years as a community builder and a community manager. And, uh, and therefore, I know what players hate. And you might go, well, that seems a little bit, oh. I uh, kind of go, yeah, yeah, but if I know what they hate, it means I know how to work with them. I know how to get players what they want. And I also know what players like. And so I think about games in a, uh, uh, an academic fashion. As much as I love them, uh, I think about them in an academic sense as well. Uh, in terms of what are they trying to achieve with this mechanic and uh, and how long are you going to hold someone's attention if you are repeatedly having to just drive around in a circle because I don't want to drive all the way back to base and then back out again. Not least of all, because I didn't time it. Let's go a bit further. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That should probably about cook it, I reckon. Right. Get it happening. What do you think? Six hours? I, oh, no. There, there's the clock. Look. There's the clock. Okay, now I think I set. I think I started setting at ten o'clock at night, uh, which means I've probably got another few hours to go yet. And we'll pick that up in the next video that I do here in the Barents Sea, where it's snowing. Oh, that's a nice view, isn't it? Isn't that a nice view? I mean, Colonel Fayer, McGilly, thank you very much for the question. It needs a stage two answer with regard to a little bit more detail about what I've what I've done. Oh, look at that! It's almost worth it. Almost. I've got to check my fuel. Ah, fuel's fine. You can do another 16 laps if you need to. Oh, that's nice. Uh, if you want to submit one of these, this is the Get Back to Work series where you get to pick the game from a list. I'm not, you know, I'm not open to everything. Uh, from a list and uh, and you get to name the topic I talk about while playing it. I've been Colonel Failure. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Oh, it, uh, you have to go to... I, I can't go into the end bit yet. If you want one of these... Information's in the description below, but it's wizio.com slash kernel underscore failure. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. All of that business and cheerio.